Okay, so I want to say some things here about uh, epistemology and ontology, and the argument would be, again, that ontology is more primary than epistemology. I do want to grant that axiology, ontology, and epistemology really can't be separated. They're all three branches, and you do have to be able to address all of them. I would give primacy to ontology, seconded, and almost simultaneous with axiology. I think as soon as you pick your ontology, your axiology is the metaphysics of your ethics are implied. And then epistemology is crucial. It's, it's very important, but it is something that is the most abstract in the sense that it's the most already detached and now in the problem of representationalism. The argument would be that those people who think epistemology comes first, and yes, if, if you think you're implicated in this, please respond to this right now. I'm sure there are many people who want to put priority to epistemology. My argument would be, if you think epistemology is prior, you are caught in a kind of Cartesianism. You are caught in a belief that a person is basically a detached cogito wending its way through abstract geometric space and you're doing so with a kind of system of representations, some kind of symbol thing pieces which stand in a, a kind of representational relation to another external world space that's some sort of geometric um, grid, again, that you're sort of representing. That is what everything in your world has to look like. The argument that I would give is that Right, ontology is prior, and it's both logically prior and it's temporally prior. To say that it's logically prior, I just clarified. To say that it's temporally prior, let me try to give you some examples. I think that humans are part of nature, we're continuous with it, we've grown out of it. Those people uh, who believe that epistemology is primary, you're kind of caught in the humans aren't part of nature. Yeah, that's the Descartes legacy, right? You're caught in a kind of alien other who's not really part of nature in the way that the rest of the world is. The person who is struggling with ontology begins with the problem of how humans are related to everything that's around them. They don't just assume they're already a detached cogito. Now, take, for example, plants. I think at some level we're continuous all the way with organic life through vegetation. It's probably a radical claim, but some people would want to say that, no, we're descendants from primates. I would say, yeah, but primates are descendant from what? And then th those are descendant from what? And when you push it back, at some level, we're vegetable. That's why we're all sleeping beings. Sle right? Plants are sleeping animals. The, the, they're the eternally asleep. Right? This is Giorgio Agamben's uh, piece from his wonderful book, The Open. At any rate, phototropism, when plants relate to the light around them, they're not relating in a relation of representation. It's their very being that is a behaving, right? Go read Madarana and Varela's notion of behavior. They, plants behave without a nervous system. Yeah, right. And the behavior is a harmony with the environment to such a degree that you start to introduce systems notions where it becomes very problematic to say where the whole is and where the part is. The plant doesn't even take on the characteristics of a whole. In some way it does. In other ways it's actually the part of a larger whole. And we could say the same thing for the various parts of that plant and the larger ecosystem uh, that it's in. Take insect and uh, the sign systems of insects, bees, uh, there's all this work that's been done on bees and the dialect of different bees and the waggle and the dance that it has and how complicated that is. What people who have studied insects have found is that the relationship between the individual and the collective is very complicated and it's very complicated to say what is the whole. In fact, it starts to look like the individual bees are actually parts of a larger system that's a whole, and if you try to treat each bee as if it were an independent, self-sustaining whole, you miss the being of the bee, of what that bee really is. Uh, it, it starts to be that you're going to miss it, because there are relations, and they're not representational relations. 
Now, the waggle of the bee, arguably, right, it starts to have something like a representational character there to it, right? Th different than, say, the phototropism. The tropism is the response. It's not representing it. it it's reaction, right? The, the command and the obedience are simultaneous. The, the insect, the, the waggle gets tricky, but notice the waggle, when the bee does the waggle, it never goes back and, as a practical joke, waggles where the food isn't. Uh, they've been able to misdirect the bees by polarizing the light in different ways, so it's very hardwired and determined in a certain sense. But there is, does seem to be a sort of representationalism there, but it's not the representationalism of all of the character of the bee. That's just one relation of how it gives information to the rest of the hive regarding food sources around it. It's not, it doesn't characterize the full being of the bee, it's just one of its relations. Now, let's go to humans. By the time you get to human evolutionary development and you're all the way past mammals and higher primates where we are organisms that spend devoted, devote, lots of time to raising our, our young, right? You're not like a tuna that just jump, dumps out millions of eggs and then doesn't worry about them. We, we time bind, we invest into youth and we're very concerned about that. I think partly it starts to problematize the part whole again. Part of the problem with the Cartesian cogito is that it moves out of an isolated eye, a separate eye who's only representing the world. But we're in the world becoming ourselves long before we're just cognitively representing things. There's everything from the way our frontward orientation is from our body and the world itself is always geared toward bodies that have a frontward orientation but there's hands hands themselves have various relations of comportability and those comportabilities allow objects to disclose themselves according to the way those hands uh, can be arranged but there's so much more than that even right it's not just thought we are relating to the world in lots and lots of ways that are not representational. My body, when it feels cold, the thought that it feels cold is actually different than my body shivering in the cold. The cold body isn't representing the temperature outside it. The cold body and the cold environment are part of the same thing. When you try to then, in thought, go, oh, look, my body is shivering, that means I'm cold, I'm going to interpret that as a sign, we're missing how, at one level, we're more like plants. We are part of an environment. The worldhood of the world, the very way that the world makes room for itself, is misplaced in most epistemologies. Too many epistemologies, they have begun with a Humpty Dumptyism. They're caught with things broken into pieces, and they haven't really figured out how they were holes to begin with, and now they're stuck with representational relations being the only kinds of rep representation they're stuck with representational relations being the only kinds of relations that they can adjudicate in predicate logic and they can really verify with some sort of certainty uh, but those those are such the derivative mode of relation right read you know, Heidegger's work on assertion there. Assertion is valid, but it's a derivative mode, and it's a derivative mode that only occurs at certain moments. For the most part, we're transparently absorbed into our background practices and environments. We're installed in a larger whole, not because we're forgetful and this kind of stuff, but it's because we're parts of a larger whole. Dasein, that is you, you are being in the world. There isn't a world there independent of people. To say so is to beg the question of the there. This is partly why he uses the word Dasein. The there here can be there only for a being who's cleared to make the there there. Okay, thanks.